are you like me and you get to a point in mock draft season because that's officially what this season is where you just start to almost giggle. <laughs> like you either see the same thing over and over or people are just doing ridiculous mock drafts because they need the clicks. They need you to look at something. They need you to see what's going on. And so look, what ends up happening is this really weird thing where you have no idea what to believe anymore. Like, you don't know what's real. You don't know what's true. You don't know what's based in fact and based on what people think, what's based on just getting clicks, if there's rumors, trades, whatever. And I thought it very interesting when I came across this article, Peter King and an agent that he was talking to both firmly agree that NFL mock drafts are laughable and that there will be shocks. Okay, so. Trying to predict um, what NFL teams will do in a mock draft is often an exercise in futility. We know that agents have agendas when leaking information, but I'm going to add this to this article. So do teams. Uh, we have no idea if the Lions are actually targeting a quarterback, but they're trying to make everybody think they are. Honestly, they're kind of trying, which makes me even think that there's, that there's more of a, a thing is. But uh, Peter King of Pro Football Talk wrote, and Peter King's been in the business a long time. The longer I'm in this business, the more I absolutely believe the draft mystique until the final hours. As one agent with 30 years of experience told me Saturday, the mocks this year are going to be laughable. So many guys repeating the same thing, trusting guys who might not know anything. Okay, so here's what we know. Everybody, where, where does that stand? Everybody right now, and we'll keep going on this article, everybody right now has Anthony Richardson to the Colts at number four. Everybody has C.J. Stroud to the Panthers at one, Bryce Young to the Texans at two, Will Anderson to the Cardinals at three, unless somebody has them trading to the Cardinals. There's not a lot of diversity in these mock drafts. The Seahawks are either taking... Wilson, or they're taking Carter. And then we are taking the opposite person. Every once in a while, you'll see somebody throw in a random name. And I think that's why these are some laughable mock drafts because they're almost always the same. They don't know what teams have. And I think when it comes to us and the Seahawks, especially us, it's like, what do they need? So these mock drafts almost get laughable to an extent, but let's keep, let's keep seeing what go on here. There are a few ex expectations, of course. The Panthers will take a quarterback with a top overall pick. The Texans at number two and the Colts at number four seem likely to follow suit. It wouldn't be surprising if four quarterbacks were off the board in the top 10. I agree with that. Beyond that, good luck. But here is what people are saying. What they're saying is the mock drafts aren't actually that close. So I saw a... Um, a very recent mock draft that CBS came out with. And, and here's the thing I've noticed, at least in my mind, that CBS seems to have some ridiculous mock drafts. They seem to be a little bit behind, but they flipped. They went Bryce Young at one, Stroud at two, Richardson three, moving up. Indy moves up so that nobody jumps them to get Richardson. I've heard other people say that multiple teams don't have Richardson in their top four quarterbacks. Think about that for a second. All right. Then it goes, Will Anderson, Jalen Carter, and then to our Detroit Lions, Lucas Van Ness with Tyree Wilson on the board with Christian Gonzalez on the board with Devin Witherspoon on the board with two tackles on the board with Jackson Smith and Jigba on the board. I I'm just saying like, that seems kind of nuts. Miles Murphy's still on the board. So that's where we go. And then at number 18, they have us going Brian Breesey. What I just heard about Brian Breesey is that like, yeah, somebody might take him. We all think he looks good. But the reality is that he looks good every once in a while. One analyst uh, said Brian Breesey is like my golf game. I, I stink. I suck for 17 holes. And then all of a sudden on the 18th hole, I hit a great drive. And I'm like, I'm a great player. I'll see you next week. I'm back. Put me on a league. Like, I'm going to run this. And that's kind of what I, I'm, I'm just thinking to myself. Like, at this point in the game, you always have to mix things up. But you can't just mix things up to mix them up. 
you have to actually have some knowledge of what's going on. Um, and you can't just throw caution to the wind. You can't do it. You can't do it. So when you're, when you're looking at these things, I think what you have to do is you have to look at the people who actually know what's going on. So if you want to get an idea of where the lions are going to pick, you need to look at people that have the lions and are talking about them often. So for example, the athletic, this is the beat writer mock draft. Okay. This is the beat writer mock draft. Um, March 22nd. It's their most recent one. Okay. So Carolina Panthers go Stroud. That means their guys believe Stroud is the guy. Texans are going young. Will Anderson to the Cardinals. He didn't trade. Colts go Richardson. Carter to the Seahawks. Tyree Wilson to the Lions. That makes more sense. But again, this is what everybody's doing. Minnesota trades all the way up for Will Levis. Like there's a lot of craziness that's happening. And then I believe this is the, the multiple first round ones. Deontay Banks at 18 for us. Hate that pick. Uh, at 18. I really do. I mean, it could end up being fine. I just, Oh, I don't love it. 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 And then um, they have us trading back up. Remember for Darnell Washington, we've talked about this. There are going to be laughable mocks. There were mock after mock after mock of the Detroit lions drafting two corners. So many people were doing that in the mock draft. And then here's the funny part about it. Um, we ended up going out in free agency and getting two corners. So all of a sudden that mock didn't make sense. Brad Holmes even went on the podium and said, I'm going to tell you right now, we're not going to take two corners in the first round. <laughs> like he, he's like, I've seen some of the box, two corners in the first round, like kind of making fun. And, oh, that's always hilarious. And, and you never know, but there are laughable mock drafts. Here's the thing. We don't know which one they are. We don't know which one they are. All we can do is take what we've had in the past. And I can't wait till Brad Holmes is here for like year six, seven, eight, nine. And we have an even better idea of what he's going to be doing. But right now we just don't know exactly what's going to happen. We don't know exactly what's going on. And that's okay. That's okay. That's what makes it fun. That's why you want to join us on the 27th. So when we're watching this live, we get to all get excited together because picks are happening that we didn't expect. Nobody thought we were trading up to get Jamison Williams last year. Nobody thought Pascal was in, on, on the radar in round two. We didn't think it. Brad Holmes knew. It didn't make sense to us, but Brad Holmes knew. So if we can take anything out of that, just take it as this. We're drafting for talent. We are drafting for talent. Who do you think Brad Holmes think is the most talented player? That's the one we're going to draft. The most talented guy who loves football. All right. Hey, don't forget to join us on the 27th for the NFL draft. So we can talk about all this, hit the comments behind. Um, what are some laughable mock drafts that you've seen? Maybe, maybe throw that in the comments. I'd love to see some of the, the predictions. Remember when mock drafts were coming out and we were taking Breezy at number six. How great is that? All right. We'll see you guys on the next one.